Are you trying to wrap your head around empirical research methods? You keep reading about quantitative and qualitative research, but what's the difference? Don't panic. You will get an easy answer to this question over the next few minutes. In this video, you will learn about the five crucial differences between quantitative and qualitative research methods. So not only will you be able to distinguish these two approaches in your sleep, but hopefully you'll get some valuable ideas for choosing the method for your next scientific work. And now, without further ado, welcome to Schreib. Many thanks to Scribber for sponsoring this video. More about Scribber later. Before we dive into the differences between qualitative and quantitative research, we need to clarify what they have in common. They are both part of what is called empirical research. This means, in a very simplified way, the systematic collection of data to gain knowledge. In a figurative sense, the experiences, that is, the data, are used to derive new scientific knowledge. This always involves some sort of observation in the real world or engagement with real people. For example, social sciences, but also the natural sciences, of course, are dominated by empirical research. In contrast, research by a mathematician or a philosopher who reaches insights only by thinking and logical reasoning is not considered empirical. That does not mean one is better or more scientific than the other. They are just different ways to gain knowledge. In philosophy of science, the question about how researchers can gain knowledge in the first place is subject to epistemology. Look up this term if you want to dive deeper into this. The distinction between quantitative and qualitative research is the result of more than one century of debates between researchers about what science is and how research should be conducted. In a nutshell, two positions emerged based on different philosophical assumptions about how the world is made up. In philosophical terms, this is called ontology. The more sciencey scientists were convinced that there is an objective reality that is independent from us humans. In philosophical terms, this worldview is called realism. This reality can be measured by using numbers and statistics. In philosophical terms, this theory is called positivism. This was the starting point for quantitative research. As this thinking was dominant in the academic landscape of the early 20th century, emerging disciplines adopted the same principles. For example, psychologists studying the inner workings of the human mind applied the same natural science-based approach. Later, this approach to social sciences led to the emergence of other positions that were not at all happy with this type of thinking. Wait a minute, they said. Don't you think social phenomena are constructed differently by different groups and people? They had a point. A stream of research emerged that was not interested in statistically computing the personality traits of teenagers or how the management of an IBM computer worked. The relevant philosophical terms here are constructivism and interpretivism. One important milestone in advancing the qualitative paradigm was Glaser and Strauss's 1967 grounded theory methodology. It reversed the deductive logic of testing theory to an inductive logic of generating theory. Until this day, the grounded theory methodology is an important part of qualitative inquiry. Now let's look at the five different characteristics of both approaches. First, the object of study. Quantitative research investigates large samples and assumes more of an outside view. Qualitative research investigates small samples and assumes more of an inside view. 2. Types of data. Quantitative research relies on numerical data that is hard and replicable. Quantity as a characteristic means measuring the amount of a certain unit. Quantitative data is therefore available in large quantities in the best case. But not only the quantity is decisive, but also the quantifiability. This means that these data are unambiguous. For example, if a test person or participant answers question 1 in a survey, 
with the answer option 3, then this data is unambiguous. A measurement method of a sensor or the number of comments on a Twitter message is also unambiguous. And this brings us to the great advantage of quantitative data. You can apply statistical techniques to analyze it. Qualitative research relies on linguistic data, that is soft and unique. Qualitative data are always context dependent. That means the basic conditions of your data collection environment must be taken into account during the investigation. This is particularly important in case studies. The great advantage of qualitative data is that they can be rich. As a researcher, you really get underneath the surface level and can attempt to explain why things are the way they are. Now, before we continue with difference three, let me just say a few words about the sponsor of this video, Scribba. If you are looking for a proofreading service or plagiarism check for your scientific work, I can wholeheartedly recommend the team at Scribba. Just have a look at scribba.com and send me a short email to info at schreib.eu for an exclusive coupon code. Difference number three, analytical logic. Quantitative research typically measures things and follows a deductive logic. Qualitative research typically interprets things and follows an inductive logic. Deductive logic means using a general mental model to form a specific conclusion. For example, using a theory to derive hypotheses. Inductive logic means starting from a very specific example or case and forming a general conclusion. For example, using interview data to generate a theory. Difference 4. The methods. Quantitative research uses methods such as surveys, experiments or simulations. Qualitative research uses methods such as interviews or observations. 5. The theoretical contributions. Quantitative research typically contributes to theory by testing propositions or hypotheses. And qualitative research typically contributes to theory by introducing new concepts, models or mechanisms. And both applies to social science theory. How to choose between quantitative and qualitative methods? If you are faced with the challenge of conducting empirical work, then choosing the right research design is one of the most important decisions of all. It all comes down to your research objectives, that is, answering your research questions. Which research method can best achieve this goal? This question is the basis of your consideration. I would like to make it clear that scientific work does not have to be empirical. In some disciplines, this would not make sense at all. Moreover, most scientific disciplines welcome both quantitative and qualitative research. In fact, many researchers see great value in combining both approaches. This is then called mixed methods. The next step you can take now is grabbing Cresswell's classic textbook and dig deeper into what you just learned.